Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to the next video, which is a bulb switcher. Although the problem a rating is not marked as that good, but I'll say it's a good problem if you just want to have that math understanding and all that stuff. So yeah, I'll just say, okay, it's actually a good problem. Not actually a medium problem in terms of maybe it would have been marked as score of two or three while in a three maybe while in a contest that's the reason the people have marked them marked it as more dislikes but maybe it's just a good problem you should try it so yeah uh, let's start with what the problem is saying it's pretty easy that we have n bulbs okay in total in the first first try which is first round which is first iteration you turn on all the bulbs cool which means every bulb one two three four five six up till n then at the second round you toggle off every second bulb which means two four six eight and so on right on the third round you toggle every third bulb which means toggle is just if it is on make it off if it is off make it on so basically in initial we make it on all the bulbs then in this round we make it off so here also we did a toggle of every second bulb here every third bulb in the third round so m goes for the ith round every ith bulb needs to be toggled nth round nth bulb will be made if it is on it it will be made off if it is off it will be made on now we have to say in the last of those n rounds number of bulbs that are after like which are on number of bulbs that are on after n rounds first example which means in the first round one two three all will be made on because all are multiples of three all are multiples of one then two will be will be toggled back which means on then it turned to off in round three th three will be toggled which means on then off thus in final state only one bulb is there on thus the answer is one let's look at with a bigger example let's say we have six bulbs so as we knew that for every bulb which means if we have six bulbs so we have six iterations which means six rounds we will have cool in the first round every bulb first second third fourth fifth and sixth everyone will be turned on because everyone is a multiple of one cool then in the second round two four and six will be toggled back which means on to off on to off on to off now the new state is this then in the third round every of the third bulb which means third and sixth bulb will be again toggled back which means on to off off to on now it is the new state in the fourth every of the fourth bulb, which means only the fourth one will be toggled back in the fifth round only the fifth one will be toggled back in the sixth round only the sixth one will be toggled back now if you clearly look now see what i did was i mapped iterations to okay what is one how one iteration looks like for every of those bulbs now i will map the reverse thing which means for every of the bulb how may it in how many iterations it comes in which means as you can see bulb one it only comes in the first iteration which means if it is on it remained on the entire time right bulb 2 it just switched off just one time and then it remained same right bulb 3 it just switched one time and then again it remained same bulb 4 it switched hair to hair which means one time it remained same it again switched next time also then it remained same so i will just map the same thing which means for bulb 1 it is affected only at first iteration the bulb 2 is affected at first and the second iteration which means in the first iteration it is made on and then it is made off and then it just remains off only third bulb is affected at the first iteration and the third iteration which means first iteration it is made on then at the third iteration it is made off now it is remain same so you saw at and the fourth bulb it is affected at first second and fourth iteration which is fourth bulb if you just go on first second and fourth iteration right it is being changed okay cool and same goes for the fifth bulb and the sixth bulb if you just clearly look then what's happening is 
first when it say okay first second and fourth iteration which means on off and back on right so in total if the iterations if this okay is it's it goes for first second third fourth if the number of iterations are odd then it will at last be in a on state if the, if the number of iterations are even it will at last be a off state okay now we have to know for every bulb if the number of iterations are actually odd i'm gonna say okay it will be in at last odd but 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 you saw what these numbers actually are showing one what is one one for two what is one two for three what is one three for four what is one two four for five what is one five for six what is one two three six there are factors of that number for six the factors of six are one two three and six for four the factors of four are one two and four for three the factors of three are one and three okay so now i get to know one thing these are the factors of a number and if the factor of the number if the number of factors are actually even i'm gonna land on an off state but if it is odd i'm gonna land on an even state so one standard intuition which comes in my mind is that i'll just go and say what all numbers out of the n numbers because i have n bulbs of the n bulbs how many bulb have odd number of factors which means for every number i'll just find the number of factors depending upon which algo you use uh, you can find the number of factors let's say the complexity which you use is o of f then for every of those n numbers which means for every number from 1 to n you just find the factors and whatsoever number has odd number of factors you will just return that count of numbers but 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 can you just improve that Hmm? if we just clearly visualize okay what ultimately i want is what are the numbers which have odd number of factors now let's visualize the factors of every number so that i can find them, okay what all numbers can have odd number of factors so if i just write down numbers from 1 to 10 i return the factors of every number now what happens if you just clearly see i'll just pick and choose okay as you can clearly see that only the numbers 1, 4 and 9 are the one having all factors. The rest all have even factors. But still, we will just go reverse way. Let's just remove all the numbers. Firstly, we are pretty sure for all the numbers right here that these are numbers which are prime. So for every of those numbers, we for sure know that if it is a 2, then it's a prime number. Then the only factor is 1 and 2 itself. That's okay. 1 and 2 the one and the number itself only two factors it's always gonna uh, be your uh, even number of factors if you look at the other numbers also we can also club them in the same thing as above that for every number if you just clearly go and look that then every number looks like this the factors are nothing but if you just go for six we have one six one into six and 2 into 3. For 8, we have 1 into 8 and 4 into 2. For 10, we have 1 to 10, 5 into 2. You can see, it's just pairs of, which, be, which means every number can be represented as a pair of those factors. Which means if I just represent 9 also, it is 1 into 9 and 3 into 3. The only difference here is the 3 is being repeated again. So, in total, the unique factors are, although it should have been 4, but one of them which means three is repeating again that's the reason the factors have now become odd that's the reason if you just clearly look and see then the factors always are in pairs but for the numbers which are prime oh perfect square for the numbers which are perfect square one of the factor will actually repeat and we have to find the unique number of factors that's the reason although it would have been even which means 2 into x or something. But as one of the factors is repeating because root of 9 is actually 3, which means 3 into 3 is actually 9. So 3 into 3, that 3 again is coming. But I have to count the unique, unique number of factors, which means 1, 3 and 9 I will count. That's the reason it will have 4 minus 1. M minus 1 for repeating 3. That's the reason. Even minus 1 is always odd. That's the reason 
I will just land onto odd factors for every of those perfect square numbers because for those perfect square numbers, I will get a 1 into 1, 2 into 2, 3 into 3, which is actually a repeating factor, which I have to remove from the factor itself. That's the reason. I will just count what are the numbers of perfect square up till the number n. And that can be easily found by just doing a square root of n and that's it, it's your answer which means square root of n are the number of perfect squares which are less than that number which means if let's say if i ask you what are the number of square perfect square up till the number 20 you just do a square root of 20 you just return okay it's 4 so this 4 is actually the number of perfect squares how it is 1 4 9 and 16. These four numbers are the perfect squares less than the number 20. You'll say, Aryan, um, how would I know that it's square root of n? I mean, why? Listen, if we just clearly go and look at the number 20 and all the perfect squares less than 20, then we can easily look. It's 1, 4, 9, and 16. If we just write them back on, okay, what's the multiple like? It is 1 into 1, 2 into 2, 3 into 3, 4 into 4. You saw what's happening. It's the first perfect square, it is the second perfect square, it is the third perfect square, it is the fourth perfect square. Which means first, second, third, fourth. That's the reason if I just do a square root of 20, it will land me back to something like as 4.472. But it just, it, like, it legit means, okay, it's not a perfect square. The last perfect square, it just ended at 4. That's the reason. 4 means, okay, it would have actually 1, 2, 3 and 4 which means 1 into 1, 2 into 2, 3 into 3, 4 into 4. That's the reason I have 1, 4, 9 and 16 as the perfect square as these 4 perfect squares less than this number 20. That's the reason I just can return a square root of n which can be internally every language has internal implementation of square root of n which is actually a O of log n implementation although you can actually by yourself also implement a O of 1 approach of that square root of n. But that's just a high effort for this small question because understanding this question itself and getting to an answer itself is actually a big deal. So I guess it would be okay for you. You, sh you like you If you want, you can go to O of 1 also, but it's internally how the square root of n is implemented by O of log n and you will be good to go. Space is no use, so it's O of 1 only. But yeah, you just have to return the square root of n and it will be the number of perfect squares less than that number n. And that will say, okay, what all number of bulbs will remain on in the end. That was all from me. I hope that you guys liked it. Code for every language, although code is pretty simple. It's just square root of n, square root of n, square root of n. I hope that you guys liked it. If yes, then would like button, share it if you want. Goodbye, take care.